Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on my video. This is Rocky here with my top moments from episode 17 of Arrow. And since it's been a while, I'm going to go ahead and do a geek out as well after this. Just talking about Hive and how they may implement them in within the Arrowverse. So my number four top moment of the episode, Arrow clones. Not only has Roz been killing criminals dressed as the Arrow, but he has members of the League doing it as well. This is doing a couple of things. First off, it's ruining the Arrow's reputation, obviously. It is also pissing off Oliver, which is what Roz wants. He wants Oliver to embrace that darker side of himself. While this is presenting some good drama, it is also pretty repetitive. As we have seen copycats before, as well as the whole Lance, please hate Arrow thing. But now Palmer's in the mix, right? So Oliver is able to convince Palmer of his innocence, but then Maceo takes out the mayor, and we are left with him having Felicity being targeted. Number 3. Arrow vs. Adam Okay, so there was a lot of build up to this fight and it pretty much played out how most people thought. Ray had the element of surprise as well as, you know, that nice fancy Sith lightning on his side. Pretty sure Roy does not think the super suit is awesome anymore. In the end, Oliver's experience paid off as he figured out that if he took out the blinking light, it would stop the suit. So was this a design flaw or a leap of logic? In all honesty, the confrontation seemed to be a way to basically have Oliver and Ray learn about each other's alter egos and cause angst for Felicity. You all know I love relationship angst, right? Number 2. Oliver Drops Some Wisdom so I know I complain a lot about the Elicity angst on the show, but I gotta say I enjoyed the moments of Oliver trying to save Felicity from being hurt again. Oliver will always love Felicity, but I truly believe that he wants her to be happy. He wants to believe Ray is a good guy as he initially does come across that way. You know, he looks to be that kind of perfect guy for her. But then you see his obsession with saving the city. This is very similar to Oliver's mentality in season one. Though Oliver actually has some skills on his side, whereas Ray has a suit and no experience whatsoever. I think Oliver could picture all the collateral damage Ray can cause. Oliver had some really insightful moments in the episode, but of course Felicity only wanted to turn around on him. Pretty sure this is due to her lying to herself about her true feelings for Oliver. Number 1. The Suicide Squad Rides Again So yeah, for me... The best moments of the episode actually belong to the Suicide Squad story, and honestly I could have used a whole lot more of it. We get to see Deadshot again as he informs Lila and Diggle that they have a mission. Who needs a honeymoon, right? Also, we get to see the lovely Cupid again, and she's just as crazy, if not crazier, than before. Lawton actually makes a few heroic choices, and one of them earns him the obsession of Cupid. Woohoo! Oliver's off the hook. Well, for now. We also get a few flashbacks from Lawton showing his fallout with his wife and daughter, as well as him taking the mission from Hive to kill Diggle's brother. Trying to repair his relationship with his daughter has been his main focus as of late. So in typical Suicide Squad fashion, our team is screwed as the senator they were sent to save actually turns out to be the bad guy. We see Lawton's leadership abilities begin to emerge, but sadly, it seems he made the ultimate sacrifice and died so the others could escape. Now, it is completely possible that this was something planned by Waller, as she may need him for deep cover. Or it could be the show getting screwed due to the Suicide Squad movie. I hope it's not because of the Suicide Squad movie, as I think the character of Deadshot brings a lot to the show, and I definitely enjoy these Suicide Squad episodes. So either way, the mission causes Diggle and Lila to reflect on their family, and they both decide to leave Team Arrow and Argus. So my final thoughts on this episode. So the episode had some really entertaining moments, but overall I felt the Arrow story was a bit flat, whereas the Suicide Squad story offered an amazing amount of detail, and I would have loved to see it expanded. We do get the rehash of Arrow being a wanted criminal again, which is a bit disappointing as it has been done to death at this point. I mean, we had the whole beginning in season one with Lance just completely hating the Arrow and the police vigilante task force and everything. And, you know, we're going through that again. Lance is pissed off. I can understand that. But he's going way overboard with this targeting the Arrow thing and it's just going to blow up and the city's going to pay the cost. With the next episode, it looks like we're going to see a whole lot of that arrow on the run, and looks like Roz makes an appearance again. 
So a lot of big things are going to be happening in the next episode, it looks like. Hopefully Lance and Oliver can come to terms on things, because like I said, the city is going to suffer with those two fighting. They need to be on the same page. And Palmer, well, I don't know. I'm still up and down with that character, as he does bring some things to the show. But on the other hand, he just kind of seems out of place. So we'll see how they continue to develop him. I know he's going to be popping up on the Flash here soon, so I think that's an area where maybe he'll mesh a little bit better with those characters so we'll see what happens with that so yeah those are my thoughts on this episode and some of my favorite moments go and let me know down in the comments below what your favorite moment of the episode was and if you have any questions about any of the characters or anything brought up in the episode go and put those down in the comments below as well i'll be happy to go over that information with you and if you've enjoyed the video i'd ask you to go ahead and give me that like button a hit and please subscribe to my channel that way you can receive alerts when i post my next arrow video as well as the other dc and marvel videos i'm doing at this time and if you have gone and subscribed already Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on board and I hope you're enjoying the videos. Alright guys, time to switch over to our geek out. I know it's been a while, so let's go ahead and have a good old fashioned geek out on Hive. So this is just going to kind of be some brief information about Hive and kind of my thoughts on how they're going to implement them within the larger Arrowverse. In the comics, Hive has stood for Hierarchy of International Vengeance and Extermination and also Holistic Integration for Viral Equality. Pretty sure Arrow is going off the original name and incarnation with some of the variations thrown in. Hive will more than likely be a dark reflection of Argus. Originally it was formed by a group of brilliant scientists gathered together by the Hive Master in the comics. The reason I see Arrow going this route is the multiple rumors about Felicity's father not only being a part of Hive but also a pretty important character. And there's also these ideas that Hive was behind Dr. Ivo and his experiments with the Miracu drug. So yeah, so I think that's the route they're going to go. And they're going to kind of set him up as this kind of opposition to Argus. Also, there's a strong chance they're going the evil scientist route to be able to kind of connect back to the Flash as well. As perhaps they were behind General Eiling and his metahuman research. And the comics Hive was also involved in Caitlin Snow becoming Killer Frost. There's also a villain that will be introduced in episode 18 of The Flash that sounds an awful lot like either Queen Bee or possibly the Bug-Eyed Bandit. So a whole lot of crossover potential is going to be there. Now in the Teen Titans animated series, Hive was presented more along the lines of a supervillain school slash cult. They trained up kids and sent them on evil missions. This would be a good way for Arrow and the Flash to bring in some newer villains. Also it could connect up to the new Flash Arrow spinoff show. In almost all forms, Hive was also involved with Deathstroke, so we could see Slade back again as well. So like I said previously, a lot of potential for various crossovers between the shows. Either way, it seems Hive will be the major season 4 villain on Arrow, and possibly further out as well. They offer some good story potential, which is something Arrow sorely needs right now. As like I said, they've been rehashing a lot of things, some of the plots have been pretty flat, and just not as entertaining as they've been previously. Also, I want to know, why exactly did Hive want Diggle's brother dead? So hopefully we'll get some answers to that as well. But yeah, so that's just some brief information on on Hive and kind of how I think they're going to be implemented within the Arrow universe. Alright guys, so let me know if you have any questions about Hive and let me know your theories on how they're going to be implemented within these shows. Alright, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day now. Bye!